the the whole process of writing it, plotting it, thinking about the characters, it's it's exciting and it gets you up in the morning. Today my special guest is Santa Montefiore. Santa, you absolutely need no introduction. <laughs> Welcome back to this week's episode of Karen's Bookshelf. My name is Karen Osman and I'm here at the Emirates Airline Festival of Literature where I'm lucky enough to catch up with some brilliant authors. Today my special guest is Santa Montefiore. Santa, you absolutely need no introduction in terms of, you know, 19 novels, four children's books. And I think that is my first question to you. You've published a novel every year since 2001. Um, First of all, how did you do that? And second of all, do you still experience the same level of excitement as you did when the first book came out? So, um, firstly, writing a book every year is an enormous amount of pressure. I do it because I love it. But last year I decided I'd write Here and Now, which comes out this year, early, which would then give me the time to take sort of six to eight months off writing. And what I realised was I got bored and I got dissatisfied and I was really kind of frustrated and I didn't understand why. And then I realised it's because I don't have a book to write. And the, the whole process of writing it, plotting it, thinking about the characters, it's, it's exciting and it gets you up in the morning. Um, so I really missed it. So I realised now that writing a book a year might be enormous pressure, but at the same time I really love doing it. And yes, I do get enormous excitement every time a book comes out. It's seeing the cover is always a huge excitement. Um, and just the fact that, wow, I've done another book. I can't believe I've actually completed another story because it is a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the book, um, your current book at the moment, The Secret Hours, which is the third, isn't it, in the, in the it's Devil the Trilogy? It's the fourth, actually. There's fourth. the trilogy. I know it sounds ridiculous because I've done a trilogy which stands as a trilogy. This is a, the fourth book in the series. It wraps itself around the trilogy. It's before and after, really. Um, so it doesn't, if you've read the trilogy, it's not going to interfere with it. It's just going to add to yeah, it. Yeah. So The Royal Rabbits of London, that's your children's series that you co-wrote with your um, husband. What prompted you to, to start writing children's stories? Well, it sounds, um, it sounds like I just sort of, it was a leap out of the blue. Actually, I wrote children's books when I was a child. I've always written, so I almost feel I'm going back to my roots. Um, my son was six. Uh, one evening he couldn't sleep and was upset by something he'd watched on telly. And I said, well, think of something you love. And he said, rabbits. I said, where do they live? And he went under Buckingham Palace. And I thought, wow, that's really crazy, but what a great idea. So then I discussed it with my husband. I said, we really should write it. And I could already see the movie. I could see rabbits pop popping up behind pictures and flower pots in Buckingham Palace. And I kind of... I thought this is definitely going to be a movie and actually it is our uh, 20th century fox are working on the movie at the moment yeah. it'll be a cgi yeah. so the animals will look real um but they're not going to be real obviously and the world and the people will be real like paddington i suppose yeah. which is really exciting yeah and your son i mean it sounds like he's following in your footsteps oh, is he my son by the way every time you mention royal rabbits he's 16 now goes like this really? it's like <laughs> i i inspired it it's my idea, you've got to give me something. Yeah. Um, so, but he's quite excited that he thought of the idea and when it becomes a movie, I'm sure he's going to boast to all his friends that it's all because of him. Yeah. Any other future projects with your husband that you're planning? Well, we will definitely continue the Rabbit series when the movie comes out. I think right now um, we've done four. I do the majority of the work when we get the notes back from the editor and things like that because my husband's always working on a big history project so he doesn't really have the time that I have. So it's a lot of work doing the children's books and my grown-up novels so I'm taking a bit of a break actually. Four is a little set um, and we've got great ideas to expand not just the story but also to branch out into other sort of books to do with the royal rabbits um, but we're not going to do it until the movie comes out and then if there's demand we'll do it yeah sounds great but i mean you're saying you'll take a bit of a break but you actually have another book coming out this summer don't you? oh yeah i won't be taking a break with my grown-up books i'll continue doing one a year i've just signed a contract for three so the one that comes out this year is my 20th it's called here and now and that's a, that's a story set on the coast of England. It's, um, and the main theme in that is dementia. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a book that's full of love and hope. And it's about a whole community coming together to support a woman who's beginning to get dementia. And it's full of quirky, hopefully very lovable characters. And my usual very strong themes of 
love, nostalgia, time, family, yeah. that sort of thing. It sounds incredible and uplifting, you know. It, it sounds is. Like quite no, an I definitely, story. but I wanted to explore the spiritual side of dementia. You know, who are you? If, you've, if you no longer have your memories, well, you're still you. You know, you're still a soul living your journey, going through life um, as a soul who's here to learn and grow and evolve on a spiritual level. So you're not less. You know, it's so I, I wanted to explore that. Yeah, well, look forward to that one. So, writing for over twenty years, I know um, you must have come across some real gems of nuggets of advice for for viewers watching who might want to pen their mm. own novel. What's the single most important piece of writing advice you've been given or received? Well, my husband always told me to write, get it written, then get it right. And it sounds very simple, and you might not see the importance of it, but so many people setting out to write a book, talk about it, ask, you know, they, I get asked at every festival I go to, how do you do it? And I ask, well, how long have you had this idea? Oh, five years. And that person's gone around and asked every author they come across, actually, you just have to sit down and get it written. And once you've got it written, it's like um, carving out a cave. Carving out the cave is the really hard part polishing it, smoothing it, decorating it is the fun part. So you've got to do the hard work and get it written first and then go back and that's when you polish it, you add to your characters, you create, you know, you embellish your world and improve it but the hard work is in the writing and nobody can help you with that. You just have to sit down and do it. Yeah and find the discipline. Yes and find the it. discipline to do it. I mean you can talk about it forever but nobody but you can sit down and do it and that's the first step. Yeah, sound advice. Santa, thank you so much for joining me it's here today. It's a pleasure. Today. Thank you thank very you. much for having me. That's all from me and I look forward to seeing you again next week on Karen's Bookshelf.